Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. Yeah, the first stage any time is that you have to begin to assemble a new mind. So if you wanted to become a more loving parent or a more patient parent, or if you wanted to become a more successful businesswoman or successful entrepreneur, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to start asking some important questions like, what is it to be successful? What do I have to change about myself to be wealthy? What does a great parent look like? Who in history was great that I admired? And how do they think? And yeah. how do they think? And mm -hmm. as you begin to read this information, you're installing new circuits in your brain. But you better review that information because it takes a series of repetitions mm -hmm. before you begin to create networks of neurons that will literally become the forerunner to the next experience. So now, when you learn that knowledge and you apply it and you personalize it and you demonstrate it, you're going to modify your behavior in some way and when you change your actions, you're going to have a new experience. Now, experience is going to really enrich the brain because jungles of neurons are going to begin to organize to reinforce the circuits you learned intellectually. The moment that happens, the experience produces an emotion and the moment you feel success, the moment you feel compassion, the moment you feel like a great parent, now you're instructing and teaching your body chemically what your mind is intellectually understood. So you could say knowledge is for the brain, but experience is for the body. Change looks like this. Most people sit on the couch with the remote control. They got their laptop over here. They got their uh, smartphone here. They got the television in front of them. And they say, oh, I think I'm going to change tomorrow. Now, what do you think the body is the unconscious mind is going to say? What do you think the body is the mind reader is going to say? No, it's not. Nah, yes. relax. You're not <laughs> going to change. But when you say, listen, I don't care how I feel, body. I don't care how long it takes, time. Mm -hmm. I don't care what's going on in my life, environment. I'm going to do this. And the hair on the back of your neck stands up. The body gets a very strong signal, which means, uh-oh, she's serious That's this time. That's an aha moment. It's a moment where the body gets, the, the decision is an experience that begins to rewrite the program. So that being said, there's no actual amount of time that it takes to change of habit. Some people can do it overnight. Some people can make the decision and the message reaches the body electrochemically right. and the person is done. Yep. Other people have to pay attention. They have to really um, repeat it enough times. They spend, so there's length of time that they're actually do, you know, putting their attention behind it. There's a lot of variables, but the key ingredient is inspiration because when you come out of your resting state, the body is the servant to the mind. It's the animal. And just like when you're training an unbridled horse, when you get ready to ride that horse and you pull the reins in and you mm. give it a good kick, the horse says, okay, the, the rider's it's ready serious, this time. Yes. And if, you're, if you've been away from the horse and you climb on that horse and you're not ready, They'll the know. horse is the mind. They did a scientific experiment where they took a group of children that scored poorly in mathematics uh -huh. and they taught them study habits and time management and outlining and review. and. They gave them a test three months later and these children scored basically the same or slightly higher. They took another group of children and they taught them a short course in neuroscience. They showed them pictures of neurons changing, how the brain works, and when they took their test they scored, they scored way higher because they understood what they were doing and why. Most people, as I said earlier, are trying to create some type of change in their personal reality, but they're still the same personality. We have to become somebody else. So, if you were to sit down and you began to think about a new way of being, a new thought that would connect to a new emotion that could drive you to plan a new behavior, and you reviewed that enough times, there's a good possibility that you would change your brain neurologically and you would emotionally signal your body chemically to signal new genes to look like your brain and body already have the experience. The biological and neuroscientific wow. model says it's possible. And if you could get up as a different person than you sat down, now here's the key, and then to maintain that modified state of being your entire day, independent of your environment, hmm. something unusual should happen in your life. That's the law. So <clears throat> it's like this. Most people do a meditation. They have a great meditation. And then they spend the rest of the day in a state stress, of judgment or, or stress. Yeah. That's like mm -hmm. eating an organic, healthy breakfast and then spending the rest of your day eating junk food. Right. The purpose of meditation is to prime the brain and body into a new state of being, to elevate your sense of self. 
so that the environment is no longer, you're not affected it. Actually, you've changed something inside of you, both neurologically and chemically, in mind and body, that now you're beginning to produce an effect in your environment. So I always recommend experiment in your reality. We are scientists in our life. And if you could say, okay, I move through my day with grace and ease and flow finds me and I live in no time and accomplish everything, there is a biological effect that's taking place in your body. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to feel like what that would feel like when mind and body are working together, now you get up in a state of being because a state of being is when thoughts and feelings are aligned. Now, you have to practice that enough times so that it begins to become familiar to you. But if you did this and you said, okay, you know, universal mind, quantum field, giver of life, I took time out of my day to emulate you as a creator. So listen, if I'm just a child of God and I'm practicing this and experimenting, I got to know that you're real. So listen, if you've been paying attention to my efforts, show me a sign, but don't show me a typical sign. Show me a sign that that I could never predict, that surprises me, that leaves no doubt that what I did inside of me produced some result outside of me so that I'm inspired to do it again. You know, when you're in your analytical, critical self and you're in a certain level of awareness, your brain has to create meaning between the external environment and the internal environment. That's the function of the brain. So it's gathering all this data and trying to make meaning out of it. But when you begin to pay attention and you begin to focus and concentrate, the frontal lobe acts like a volume control. And it doesn't want to be distracted by any extraneous stimuli. So it begins to quiet down the motor circuits in the brain and you become still. It cools off the sensory circuits and you no longer feel your body. It cools off the circuits in your brain that processes time and space. It even shuts out the lights in the visual cortex of your brain. And it cools off the mind-brain activity in your association centers. Now why does this happen? Because when you're able to quiet down the circuits in your brain that are reflected to everything you know in your life, the thought that you're thinking in that moment literally becomes the experience. The brain upscales its hardware to reflect the thought as the experience. So when the frontal lobe is paying attention and you're truly in a, in a moment of presence, your brain doesn't want to be distracted by anything. So According to functional scans, as the brain begins to quiet, the frontal lobe begins to quiet down the rest of the brain, that's when you begin to no longer feel your body. There's a biological reason for it, and that's when the frontal lobe, the forebrain, begins to get in control. The brain is highly, you know, it's very it's full of water, it's 78% water, it's right. very plastic, and, um, you know, to shake things up, of course, is to begin to do the unpredictable, to begin to step outside of the familiar, hmm. learn new things, apply them begin to have new experiences and see if those experiences lead to wisdom, give you a greater understanding, and um, become a scientist in your life. I mean, I love to begin to make changes inside of me and then look for the results outside of me. I, I'd love to see if I'm changing my mind in some way, then let's see if there's evidence in my life. If the, I mean, think about it. How do you know that you're you? You look in the mirror and you see your face, right? Mm -hmm. That reflection. Uh, so how does the ego know itself? Uh, it's the environment. So your environment then reflects back to you your level of mind. So if you can change your mind then, do it and see, well, let's see if I change up something inside of me, if there's some effect outside of me and begin mm -hmm. to play with that a little bit. Once you understand the how-to, that you can't use your conscious mind to do this. You have to move beyond the analytical mind. And when you understand brainwave patterns and when you slip into a different state of mind that it's it's easier to do it because most people then you know 95 percent of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a set of memorized habits and behaviors that become part of our identity or personality so five percent of the conscious mind is trying to change 95 percent of what we've memorized hardwired become addicted to emotionally so the person may want to think positively, but they've been feeling negatively and oiling those programs for the last 25 years. They may want a new life with a, a new conditions, and as they use their mind, conscious mind, to focus on that, their subconscious mind, they've been, they've been programmed to feel guilty. That's mind and body in opposition. We have to begin to recondition the body to a new mind. So it changes in heart. It's just that you've got to get the manual to understand how to begin to unlearn and relearn, to break the habit of the old self and reinvent the new self. 
you know, Newtonian physics is about cause and effect. You know, you and I wait for, for most people, they wait for a reason to feel joyful. They wait for a reason to feel gratitude. And when the event happens, then they give thanks. That's cause and effect. Uh -huh. The quantum model of reality really says something different. The quantum mo model of reality says you have to change your mind and body, thoughts and feelings ahead of the actual event so your brain and body are physically changed to look like it's already happened. So, if you begin to give thanks ahead of the experience, and your body, by the way, is the unconscious mind. It does not know the difference between an event in your life that produces an emotion or an emotion that you fabricate by thought alone. To the body, it's the exact same. Okay. So, if you could begin to move into a state in which you were giving thanks before it took place, and you could convince your body emotionally that that event already happened because you were in a state of gratitude, then you would begin to literally biologically change your body to no longer be a record of the past, but now, in fact, a map to, a, to the future. Because if your brain and body are beginning to respond neurologically and chemically, now you're moving into a new state of being. And if you can get up in that state of being, then what you did inside of you should cause an effect outside of you. So the quantum model says then that we have to give thanks ahead of the event. We have to move into the state of joy and change our energy before it happens, so much so that we're not using our senses to determine re reality any longer. So if we're living by the emotion of pessimism, right, or depression, or sadness, or in order for you to begin to see possibility, you got to look at the thoughts that are creating that pessimism, that are happening behind the scenes of your awareness. You got to look at your behaviors that demonstrate pessimism or unhappiness. And then you got to look at the other emotions that are, you know, generated from pessimism. And when you can observe those programs, it means you're no longer the program. You're the consciousness observing the program. And if you can become so familiar with your, the way you think, act, and feel, so much so that they would never go by unnoticed by you, biologically and neurologically and chemically, you would begin to break the circuits in your brain that are connected to the old you because nerve cells that no longer fire together no longer wire together. And if you no longer signal the same gene emotionally because uh -huh. you're no longer allowing those emotions to be created in the body, and you begin to say, now, let me think about what joy looks like. Let me begin to demonstrate optimism. And by my point is you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration.